reproduction of some varieties and discourage the reproduction of others. The variety selected for eventually becomes abundant. The variety selected against becomes rare, may be extinct. But if artificial selection makes such changes in only a few thousand years, what must natural selection, working for billions of years, be capable of? The answer is all the beauty and diversity in the biological world. That life evolved over the ages is clear from the changes we've made in the beasts and vegetables, but also from the record in the rocks. The fossil evidence speaks to us unambiguously of creatures that were once present in enormous numbers and that have now vanished utterly. There are far more species that have become extinct than exist today. They're the terminated experiments in evolution. These guys, for example, the trilobites, appeared 600 million years ago. They were around for 300 million years. They're all gone. There's none left. But in those old rocks, there are no fossils of people or cattle. We've evolved only recently. Evolution is a fact, not a theory. It really happened. Imagine a place where the speed of light isn't its true value of 300,000 kilometers a second, but something a lot less. Let's say 40 kilometers an hour, and strictly enforced. Just as in the real world, we can never reach the speed of light. The commandment here is, still, thou shalt not travel faster than light. But we can do thought experiments on what happens near the speed of light, here, 40 kilometers an hour, the speed of a motor scooter. Paolo says goodbye to his little brother Vincenzo. And rides off. He's now going more than half the speed of light. He's almost catching up with his own light waves. This compresses the light waves in front of him and his image becomes blue. The shorter wavelength is what makes blue light waves blue. Also, Paolo becomes skinny in the direction of motion. This isn't just some optical illusion. It really happens when you travel near the speed of light. As he roars away, he leaves his own light waves stretched out behind him. Long light waves are red. We say that his receding image is red shifted. Now, Paolo leaves for a short tour of the countryside. Only very close to the speed of light does the visible world get squeezed into a kind of tunnel. You would really see these distortions if you could travel near the speed of light. Someday, perhaps, interstellar navigators will take their bearings on stars behind them, whose images have all crowded together on the forward view screen. The most bizarre aspect of traveling near the speed of light is that time slows down. All clocks, mechanical and biological, tick more slowly near the speed of light. But stationary clocks tick at their usual rate. If we travel close to light speed, we age more slowly than those we left behind. Paolo's watch and his internal sense of time show that he's been gone from his friends for only a few minutes. But from their point of view, he has been away for many decades. His friends have grown up, moved on, and died. And his younger brother has been patiently waiting for him all this time. The two brothers experience the paradox of time dilation. They've encountered Einstein's special relativity. Vincenzo. Each creature and every world to the remotest star owe their existence to the great, coursing, implacable forces of nature, but also to minor happenstance. We are carried with our planet around the sun. The Earth has made more than four billion circuits of our star since its origin. 
The sun itself travels about the core of the Milky Way galaxy. Our galaxy is moving among the other galaxies. We have always been space travelers. These fine sand grains are all more or less uniform in size. They've been produced from bigger rocks through ages of jostling and rubbing, and abrasion and erosion, driven in part by the distant moon and sun. So the roots of the present lie buried in the past. We are also travelers in time. Trapped on Earth, we've had little to say about where we're going in time and space, or how fast. But now, we're thinking about true journeys in time and real voyages to the distant stars. A handful of sand contains about 10,000 grains, more than the total number of stars we can see with the naked eye on a clear night. But the number of stars we can see is only the tiniest fraction of the number of stars that are. What we see at night is the merest smattering of the nearest stars with a few more distant bright stars thrown in for good measure. Meanwhile, the cosmos is rich beyond measure. The total number of stars in the universe is larger than all the grains of sand on all the beaches of the planet Earth. 